chapter 7, verse 3. When you get it, you just open your mouth and say, Pastor, I got it. I got it. Hallelujah, I got it. If you're watching on the live stream, we want to apologize for the disconnection. And, um, but also, will you turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3? And the Bible reads like this. And there were four leprous men at the entering end of the gate. Someone say, there were four. And they said one to another, why sit we here until we die? Look at your neighbors and neighbors and say, you ain't dying today. Something will die, but it won't be you. Oh, God. Jesus. Verse 4. If we say we will, we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city. And we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we also we die also. Now, therefore, come and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. Verse 5. And they rose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. Look at somebody that said, there was nobody there. There was nobody there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Verse 7. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight. Watch what they left. They left their tents. They left their horses. They left their asses. Even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. Jesus. I'm going to be preaching today from this subject that's entitled, Stuck Between a Rock and a Hard Place. Will you please repeat those words after me? Say, stuck between a rock and a hard place. And then I want to thank you and just open your mouth. Everybody need to say this. Say, God, pull me out. Pull me out. Pull me out. <laughs> say, God, pull me out. Pull me out. Amen. Touch about three persons and tell them, you coming out today with your hands up. Come on. Tell them, say, you coming out today with your hands up. I said, you coming out today with your hands up. Even more so than that, you coming out today with your head up. Come on. You know, lift. Come on. I said, you coming out today with your hands up and your head up. Glory to God. The Bible said, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty and thank you to my the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty and matter. Will you push somebody say lift up your head? Come on, say lift up your head because God is getting ready to pull you out. Ah, 
I say, God is getting ready to pull you out. And when he pull you out, he's going to pull you up. I need to open your mouth and say, I'm getting ready to, to go up. Jesus. I'm going up. I'm going up. I'm going up. Reach up and grab your neighbor. Say, neighbor, this time, when God pull you out, he's going to pull you up. Jesus, you've been down too long. God said, I'm about to pull you up. You been, I said, you've been down too long. God said, I'm about to pull you up. I need somebody to open your mouth and say, pull me up, pull me up, pull me up. Somebody open your mouth and shout in this house now. Shout. Jesus. Pull me out. Pull me out. God, pull me out. Spirit of the living God. Have your way in this place. Send your word like a mighty hammer that would break rocks into pieces. Glory to God. I said, send your word like a mighty hammer and break these rocks into pieces. Glory to God. Father, I thank you now. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. My God, my strength, and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. And the people said amen. And the people shouted amen. You can be seated in the presence of God. You can be seated in his presence. Lights out, please. Will you please just watch this video, please? Lights out, please. Watch it. By 9.15 the next morning, Ralston began biking to the Blue John Canyon, one of the places he was planning to explore. He took only enough food and water to last him a few hours, because he was not expecting this to be a long trip, but rather planning on returning to his truck later that night. When he reached the canyon's opening, he locked his bike and started making his way across on foot. It's April 26th, 2003. A man named Aaron Ralston is canyoneering in Blue John Canyon, Utah. As an experienced outdoorsman, Aaron believed that this was just another trail he knew inside and out. That all changed when, by a stroke of terrible luck, he stepped on a loose rock and fell into the canyon, trapping him in the middle of the desert with more than 50 miles between him and civilization. After somewhat calming down, Ralston laid out his options. First, he had no way of signaling for help. He was 30 meters below surface level and 20 miles to the nearest paved road. He hadn't told anyone where he was going either. It would take at least a few days for people to notice that he was missing. So Ralston's focus was on surviving until that time so that someone could find him. Second, he barely had bought any food. He had two burritos, one bottle of water, and some small candy bars. Third was the issue of getting his arm out. There was only a few ways to free his arm. He could either chip away at the boulder using the pocket knife that he had brought with him, attempt to move the 800 pound boulder on his own, or lastly, cut his arm off. Ralston spent the whole night chipping away at the boulder. Little by little, he did his best to cut away the rock that was trapping his arm. After around 15 hours of chipping away at it, he realized that there was no way he could cut enough rock to free his arm. With this realization, Ralston turned his attention to the second option, moving the boulder off of his arm. He made a makeshift pulley system using a rope that he had brought with him, but with only the strength of his one free arm against an 800 pound boulder, the situation did not change and he remained trapped. Ralston's physical health had also began to deteriorate, as his body temperature became unpredictable due to dehydration. I had very, very little water. My body's having difficulty controlling its temperature. I'm in deep stuff. This is when Ralston started to lose hope. It's pretty much suicide. It's uh, four hours from here to my vehicle. He'd been running low on food and water and started recording videos on his camcorder. Ralston had the idea of cutting his arm off for a few hours now, so it seemed like that was his last option. Climbing was 
probably be impossible with one hand. The blood loss and my dehydration, I think, um, are ruling that out. I think I would die if I cut my arm. The next day, after considerable thought, Ralston laid out the tools that he would need to cut his arm off. He took out one of the two knives from his dollar store pocket knife and tried to break the skin. As he says in the video he made using his camcorder, he could barely get any blood to draw. Jesus, I tried, I tried cutting my arm off. I couldn't even barely break the skin with this, this stupid knife. I tried a couple different blades and all I did was just mark myself up. I, I can barely even get any blood to draw. After another night of cold winds, anxiety, fear, and panic, Ralston decided to get serious about cutting his arm, and instead of trying to cut in a sawing motion, he decided to stab it. Once he realized that the knife he was using was too dull to cut through the bone of his arm, he decided to put the whole amputation thing on hold. Ralston reasoned that he would officially go missing at midday tomorrow, and he believed he wouldn't make it until someone found him. On Wednesday, Ralston really started to confront the possibility of death. He recorded himself saying goodbye to his family and friends and saying his last will and testament. He claims that the majority of the day was spent daydreaming about his life. On Thursday, it had been five days since Ralston initially fell into the canyon and he had resorted to drinking his own urine due to the lack of water. He began thinking of his escape route again and realized that he didn't have to cut through his bones with a dull knife that he had. Instead, he found that the boulder was positioned so that Ralston could break the bones in his arm himself and then cut through everything else. That's exactly what he did. It, it, it came to me, this, this epiphany that I could break that I could break the bones because my arm was caught so tightly that I could torque myself. He would have to snap both of the bones in his arm to make it work. It took him over an hour to finish the job. Finally, after Ralston had cut through his entire arm, including arteries, nerves, and tendons, he staggered backwards, hitting the wall behind him. This was a pivotal moment for him, as he described the moment as a rebirth, but with the mind of a grown man. And then, boom, and I wasn't even attached anymore, and I fell down like this, and I, 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 I was free. Now that Ralston had freed himself from the boulder, he was tasked with hiking out of the canyon and walking all the way back to his truck, some eight miles from his current location. With one hand losing blood, Ralston pulled himself out of the canyon, climbed down a 65-foot cliff, and walked six miles until a family who was hiking found him and notified authorities. Medics reached Ralston by helicopter four hours after the amputation. If they had waited any longer, Ralston would have died due to blood loss. After one of the most harrowing experiences known to man, Aaron Ralston can now live his life as he intended. He is now a motivational speaker and an engineer, and he's also written an autobiography called Between a Rock and a Hard Place. His story has also sparked interest around the world, making his book a bestseller and even adapting it to a hit film called 127 Hours. times in your life you have to do whatever is necessary to live in April 2003 <clears throat> this guy he went hiking he went hiking in a park without telling anyone that he was going hiking and while hiking, he, he gets pinned between 
a rock in a canyon while climbing. If you notice, he, he, he was hanging off the rock while climbing, <clears throat> comes loose, and it caused both the rock and himself to get wedged and trapped his arm against the wall. <clears throat> this is going to make sense in a little bit. And after spending five nights in the canyon in danger of dying of uh, hydration, or dehydration, rather, he, be he begins recording his final testimony to his family because he knew it was no way he was going to live. And over the next five days, he, he struggled to keep warm at night, and he had to, he forced himself to drink his own urine. And after having tried un, unsuccessfully to budge that 800 pound rock, he broke his arm. He broke his arm and then he amputated his arm below the elbow with a dull pocket knife, which took about an hour. You can't imagine the pain he felt. A broken arm is painful as it is, but to take a dull knife and cut the tendon. And what Aaron knew that no one knew that he was stuck between a rock and a hard place. And what's incredible is, is that Aaron Ralston incident is a true story. And it was famously depicted in the movie 127 Hours in November of 2010, how he pulled himself out of a dying situation. I need you to please hear me. I need you to please hear me, please. He sawed his right arm off to survive. Please pay attention to this. If he didn't cut off his own arm, he would be dead. Notice what he did. He had to cut off something connected to him to live. Jesus, I'm going. Man, I need to say that one more time. As painful, as painful as it was. He had to cut off something that was connected to him. Not a finger, but an arm. Jesus. His story is a life lesson that when you get stuck in a place, you have to break and amputate all connections to that place. I'm going to say that one more time. When you get stuck in a place, you got to break and amputate all connections to that place. Jesus. I need you to politely look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to break the connections. You got to, you, you got to break the connections. Jesus. If you want to get free, it might be painful, Jesus. It might, it might cause some discomfort, but you got to break all connections. 
I need somebody to open your mouth again and say, break all connections. Jesus. Yeah, break all connections. Now, stuck between a rock and a hard place, it is a metaphor. But this metaphor, Jeanette, has a life-changing meaning. Jesus, please hear me. Because what happens when you get stuck and trapped in life changes everything. When you get stuck and trapped in life, it changes everything. And these are a few questions that you must ask yourself. You have to say, self, how did I get stuck? Jesus. Come on, somebody open your mouth and say, self, how in the world did I get stuck? Another question you have to ask yourself is say, when did I get stuck? Jesus. Not just how I got stuck, but when did I get stuck? Yeah, some of y'all are stuck right now. You need to ask yourself a question right now. When did I get stuck? Jesus. And then the very last question you need to ask yourself, amen, and, uh, uh, and, and where in my head did I get stuck? Because some of y'all are stuck in a place because you stuck in your head. Jesus. And so you got to ask yourself how, when, and where did I get stuck in this mess? Jesus. Who am I talking to today? Glory to God. And what was, what, what is it that was so attractive to me? Mm, you better preach, Tommy Nard. What is it that was that caught my attention, and and what is it that I overlooked? Uh, what is why did I bypass the consequences and 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 pull myself to the edge of of my life without thinking about how this would affect my life? Can I tell you something? I'm talking to you. I said, can I tell you something? I said, can I tell you something? This is what I want to tell you. When you get pulled to the edge of life without thinking about the consequences, I came to tell at least about 10 or 15 persons, you got options. The man that was stuck in the canyon in the cave, he had options. He said, do I just die here? Or do I break my arm and cut my arm off? I need you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever you're going through in this life, you got options. Yeah. I need you to look at someone else across the room uh, and look at someone and say, exercise your options to get yourself out of your mess. I said, look at somebody across the room and say, neighbor, you got options to, Jesus, you got options to get yourself out of this mess. I need you to look at somebody and say, get out, get out, get out. I said, get, I said, look at somebody and say, get yourself out. Jesus, get yourself out. Get yourself out of this mess. Get yourself out of this mess. Somebody open your mouth again and say, get out of this mess. 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 The truth is you've been blaming the devil too long for your own messes. I'm going to say that again. You've been blaming the devil. In fact, the devil is really sick and tired of you. Blaming him for everything that you did that he had nothing to do with. Mm. You've been blaming the devil, but you need to take a look or you need to take a closer look 
at the man in the mirror. Mm. Come here, Michael Jackson, the, the late Michael Jackson, the man looking at the man in the mirror. You need to go home and go to your restroom and look at the man that's in the mirror. Glory to God. Notice this man was a professional climber. But unfortunately, he made a choice. He made a choice, and he climbed between two rocks, and he got stuck. I need you to tell your neighbor again, say, you got options, you got options. You got choices, glory to God. You got options, and you got choices. Do you remember what happened when you climbed in that relationship? And you know you shouldn't have been in that relationship. Do you, uh, listen, y'all hold your heads up. In fact, I'm going to ask you for a moment to suspend uh, your Facebook scrolling. I need you to hold your head up because you need to hear. The Bible says, how can you hear without a preacher? Get off them telephones right now. I prophesy right now. Get off them telephones. That's distracting you. Because God want to get you free from yourself because you've been stuck too long. Jeez, I ain't scared. I ain't scared. I ain't scared. I'm going to say it one more time. Get off that telephone right now. I prophesy. If you don't get off that telephone, amen, it's going to blow up in your face. Glory to God. You better get, <laughs> you better get off the telephone right now. Uh, don't they going to cut your service off? Glory to God. I prophesy right now. They're going to cut your service off. Jesus. Jesus, get off the phone. How can you hear without a preacher? In fact, the Bible said faith comes by hearing. And if you sitting there and you on your phone, you being distracted, you ain't hearing me. You listening to me, but you ain't hearing me. Jesus, get off that phone. Uh, get off that phone. And I can see. I'm standing. I can see everything. I can see. I can see everything. <laughs> Glory to God. Even if you put it down in your lap, I know your head down. I know what you're doing. You 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 on your phone. You ain't paying attention. You ain't taking that many notes. Glory to God. Do you remember what happened when you climb into that relationship? Do you remember what happened? Glory to God. When you climbed in that situation. Yeah. Do you remember what happened when you climbed into that addiction? See, some people think, glory to God, addiction is smoking and drinking. There's more addictions than that. Some people got a sex addiction. Glory to God. I said some people got a sex addiction. Mm. Uh, a sexing addiction. Mm. On, even on your phone, sexing. Glory to God. Some folks got an addiction. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Do you remember what happened when you climbed into that addiction? I need you to look at somebody and say, sooner or later, it's going to stick you. Jesus. Sooner or later, it's going to burn you. Sooner or later, it's going to stick you. Glory to God. I need you to look at somebody polite and say, don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. I said, look at somebody and say, don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. See, I know people stuck. I know people that stuck in religion and traditions. I know him. I know him. I know. I know people that stuck in religion and traditions. When God is doing a new thing in you, mm. I know people. Glory to God, and you know people too that is stuck in old mentalities and old mindsets. When you ought to be trans. Formed by the renewing of your mind. I know people stuck, and you know people stuck too, in old belief systems when you ought to have enough faith and enough substance to hope for the evidence of things not seen. I know people stuck in old wine skins like the Pharisees that lived like old the wine skins. Jesus said something like this when new wine was poured in. 
the wine, the wine skins would break apart and the wine was wasted. I need you to open your mouth. I, I really need you to open your mouth and prophesy. Open your mouth, say, stuck in between a thing. Come on, say it again. Say, stuck in between a thing will waste my life. I need you to open your mouth and make the devil really mad this time. Open your mouth and say, when I'm stuck between two things, glory to God, it will waste my life. Now grab your neighbor and say, no more, no more, no more waste in your life. Let me prophesy. No more waste in my life. You're not gonna another, you're not gonna waste another day in your life. You're not gonna waste no more money in your life. You you're not gonna you you're not gonna waste another relationship. You're not gonna waste another moment to get close to God. Look at your neighbors and no more waste in my life. 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 Jesus, God, I hear you. No more waste. You wasted too much time, Jesus, going around in circles. You waste too much time with your head in the sand. You wasted too much time trying to be friends with somebody who ain't really want, ain't really trying to be your friend. You wasted too much time with somebody you giving ninety percent and they only giving ten percent. You wasted too much time with someone that won't won't tell you. They tell you they love you, but they, they don't have no actions that they love you. You wasted too much time with, with people who want stuff from you, but won't give you nothing. You wasted too much time with that knucklehead. Glory to God. You wasted too much time. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's too much time. Yeah, that's too much time. Spend the time with people ain't going nowhere. Spend the time with people who ain't trying to reach their fullest potential. Wasting too much time with people. All they do is talk negative in your ear. Spending too much time. Wasting too much time with negative, talking negative, thinking negative, acting people. Your day is over. I prophesy this is your last day to spend another time and waste your time with anybody who's negative in your life. Open your mouth and say, today is my last day. And I feel like preaching. I said, today is your last day. Open your mouth and say, another one bites the dust. Another one bites the dust. This is the last day that I'm going to deal with that foolishness. This is the last day that I'm going to waste my time. Last day. I'm going to waste my time. And so the Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 7. 2 Kings chapter 7 is a meaningful lesson for people like me and you that feel stuck and trapped in a life situation. For the Bible said, and there were four lepers, men, leprous men at the gate. And they begin to say to one another, why sit here until we die? The question I want to ask you today, why sit in that situation until you die? Jesus, to walk through the text, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give names to four of the lepers, Jesus. I said to walk through the text, I'm going to give you names of four lepers. Leopard number one, his name was Courage. Yeah, someone shout Courage. Leopard number two, his name was Faith. Someone shout Faith. Yeah. Leopard number three, his name was Change. Someone shout Change. 
And then leopard number four, his name was Hope. Someone shout Hope. I, I want to prophesy right now to every business owner and to every entrepreneur in this house. Glory to God. Things is getting ready to change. It's going to take some courage. It's going to take some faith. And it's going to take some hope. But I came to prophesy and tell somebody, tell every business owner and entrepreneur, it's getting ready to change. Somebody open your mouth and say, it's getting ready to change. So we had courage. We had faith. We had change. And we had brother hope. Jesus. Courage, faith, change, and hope, the Bible says, was sitting at the gate. Watch this. They was collaborating and talking one to another, and they said something real, real profound and prolific. Watch, watch what they said. They said, I can see courage looking at faith, and then I can see faith looking back at courage. I can see change looking at hope. And then I see hope looking at change. And I see them looking at each other. Courage looked at change. Faith looked at hope. Hope looked at courage. And they said one to another, said, why sit here and die? Change looked at courage. Said, courage, why should we sit here and die? Jesus, Lord, help me preach this text. Hope looked at faith and said why should we sit here and die I need you to look at at least two or three persons and buck your eyes and say why sit here and die why why sit here and die I don't know where your here is but wherever your here is why sit there and die so when you get stuck between a rock in a hard place, number one, you need courage to take action. Will you please repeat that after me? Say, I need courage to take action. Amen. So when you get stuck, amen, between a rock and a hard place, you need courage. Watch this. The lepers, despite their dire situation, are y'all still here? I said, are y'all still here? I want to make sure you hadn't gone into Wonderland. Are y'all still here? The lepers, despite their dire situation, watch this. They chose to take a bold step. Yeah. Rather than remaining in their hopelessness, a hopeless situation. They chose to make a bold step. Y'all help me teach this. I said, they chose to make a bold step. Look at somebody said, neighbor said, you got to make a bold step. In, oh, here it is right here. I'm prophesying to somebody. In this next season in your life, you're going to have to take a bold step. It's time out for you taking baby steps. You've been taking too many baby steps. Amen. You too old now. It's time for you to take some bold steps. I understand you took some baby steps way back in the day. You ought to be over there by now. You ought to be walking by faith and not by sight. It's time for you to take a bold step. Look at somebody say, take a bold step. Jesus. Jesus. Please, please, please get this. They had enough courage to take action and make decisions even when the outcome was uncertain. Moving, and you better hear me. Yeah, look this way, look at me, look at me, look at me. Please get this. Moving forward is better than staying in a paralyzed position. You better hear what I'm preaching. I said moving forward is better than staying in a paralyzed position. Perhaps this is why Psalm 27 verse 14 says, glory to God, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. <laughs> Did y'all hear what I just said? 
See, y'all been waiting on your friends. Jesus, and you done, and you done got it all confused. But the Bible says, wait on the Lord. Not your friend, not your eighth boom coon, not your late in the midnight hour, not him climbing out the window, not him or she coming in the back door. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Jesus. And he shall strengthen thine heart. But you can't get your heart strengthened if you don't wait and don't have no good courage. Wait, because he wanted to make sure you really understood what he said when he said it the first time. So he said, he said again. He said, wait, I say, on the Lord. Look at they said, neighbor said, who you been waiting on? Who you been waiting on? I said, I said, I said, I said look at neighbor said, who you been waiting on? It's time for you to start waiting on folk and start waiting on people and start waiting on people. Glory to God. And start waiting on God. Look at them and say, neighbor said, I'm gonna wait on God. Come here, Job. I just heard Job say, I'm gonna wait until my change come. Though he slay me. Yet will I trust him. Oh, y'all don't miss that. Y'all don't y'all miss your point to shout. Though he slay me. Yet will I trust him. Because I'm going to wait until my change come. Open your mouth and say, I'm going to wait. Come hell or high waters. I'm going to wait on God. I need somebody to open your, open your mouth and say, God, I'm waiting on you. Y'all ain't said nothing. I said, open your mouth and say, God, I'm waiting on you. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, I'm asking God to give you enough courage to take action, to give you enough courage to take action, because in this season, I don't know who I'm talking to, but in this season of your life, actions has to speak louder than words. Words have power. But you need some actions. Glory to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If God said, get up and go to the grocery store right now, you better get up. And you ain't got no food on your table, you better get your rump up and go to the grocery store right now. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Jesus, glory to God. You need action. And so when you get stuck between a rock and a hard place, Number one, someone shout again, say, I need courage to take action. Say it again, say, I need courage to take action. Number two, when you feel stuck in a place, you need faith in the uncertainty. Say it with me, say, I need faith in the uncertainty. Say it again, say, I need faith in the uncertainty. Watch this. The, the lepers did not know what awaited them in the Syrian camp. They had no idea. Jesus, they, they, they didn't get an email. They didn't get a text message. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? There was no bird in the sky that brought a message. There was no message in the bottle. They had no idea. Are y'all hearing me? What awaited them in the Syrian camp. But the Bible said they moved with faith. I want to ask the question, when, when was the last time you moved? I said, when was the last time you moved? They moved in faith, trusting God's provision and guidance. Even when the future to them seemed, God, seemed unclear. Jesus. See, some of y'all are saying, God, I need you to show me this. God, I need you to show me that. God, I need you to show me this. I need you to show me that. God, I just got to see this. God, I'm going on a two-day fast. I need you to shut up and say, God, whatever you want to do, 
do it in my life. Do it. Are oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? Shut up. Because God is trying to do something in your life. Are oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? The lepers did not know what awaited them in the Syrian camp. But when the future seems unclear, your faith in a wise God will help you see the invisible. It'll help you to expect the incredible. Y'all know where I'm going. It'll help you to receive the impossible. And I need a faith, Jesus. I need a faith to reach the unreachable. Y'all still here? I need a faith to fight the unbeatable. I need a faith. I feel like preaching up in here. I need a faith, glory to God, to remove the unmovable. I need a faith that stands the invisible. I need a faith that can conquer some things. Some things. I said, I need a faith that can conquer. Someone open your mouth and say, anything. Anything. God can do anything but fail. I need a faith that can conquer anything. I need you to open your mouth and prophesy to your own self and say, God, give me enough faith. Say, God, give me enough faith to reach and conquer anything. Now give God a anything praise. Give him uh, anything, praise. Uh, y'all, I say, give him. Y'all still didn't get it. Give him a anything, anything you want to do. Just bless me. Anyway, you want to bless me. Just bless me. I say, give God a anything, praise. Jesus, 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 Jesus. And so, when you get stuck between a rock and a hard place, number one, you need courage to take action. Number two, you need faith in the uncertainty. Someone shout number three. Y'all, I said shout number three. Watch this. When stuck, you change with a creative initiative. When that man was stuck between a rock and a hard place, he came up with a creative initiative. You heard it. He drank his own urine. How creative is that? He said, before, oh, y'all, <laughs> before I waste my urine on the ground, I drink my, oh, Jesus. I'm trying to live. He, he had a creative initiative. Watch this. The lepers' decision to go into the camp. Watch this. It led to a miraculous discovery that changed their lives and the lives of those that was in the city. Please get this, and don't you miss this, which means your breakthrough. I don't know who I'm talking to. Your breakthrough will only come when you step out. Your breakthrough will only come when you step out, watch this, of your comfort zone. Step out of your comfort zone and take initiative. Y'all back on them phones again. Uh, step out of your comfort zone and take initiative. Somebody shout, step out, step out. Step out. You have to step out of your comfort zone. And that I know, glory to God, I, I understand that it's uncomfortable. I understand it's uncomfortable. But you got to step out of your comfort zone and take initiative. See, you stuck in that place 
because you won't step outside of your comfort zone. But if you want to unstick yourself, glory to God, Jesus. If you want to unstick yourself, you got to do something uncomfortable. I said, if you want to unstick yourself, you got to do something uncomfortable. I need you to open your mouth and say, God, help me to change and unstick myself. Say it again. Say, God, help me to change and unstick myself. Jesus, unstick myself. And so when you get stuck between a rock and a hard place, number one, you, you need courage to take action. Say it again. Say, I need courage to take action. Number two, when you get stuck between a rock and a hard place, amen, you need faith in the uncertainty. Come on, say, I need faith in the uncertainty. And then thirdly, when you get stuck between a rock and a hard place, you need to change. You, you, you got to change through a creative initiative. And then finally, number four, Jesus. Some, someone shout four. four. Come on. Come on, shout four. Yeah, I said four, not four. Four, 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 four. Number four, you must have hope in, des in desperation in a situation. You must have hope in desperation in a, si in a situation. Open your mouth and say, I must have hope. Say it again. Say, I must have hope in desperation in a situation. Now watch this as it relates to the lepers. The lepers was in a desperate situation. Y'all need to hear me. I'm getting ready to close. But their story shows us that hope and solutions can come from places unexpected. Glory to God. Please get this. God can use even the most marginalized and overlooked individuals to bring about a significant change in your life. So let me prophesy right here in this house. God said for, God said for me to tell you that he's about to take your desperation and turn it into restoration. Y'all missed it. I said, God is about to take your desperation and turn it into restoration. God is about to restore, and I'm going back to last week, what Pastor Demetri said. God is getting ready to restore everything that the canker worm ate. Mm. Everything that the poor worm ate. Even that great army that he sent amongst us. God said, I'm about to restore the years that the canker worm ate. Look at your neighbors and neighbor. Desperation. It's about to turn into restoration. Did y'all hear what I just said? You better prophesy to your own life, to your own family. That desperation is about to turn into my restoration. Open your mouth and say, God, restore me. Let me prophesy. Restore your money. Restore your income. Restore your health. Restore your life. Restore your mind. Restore your health. God is about to restore. Restoration just hit somebody. I said restoration just hit somebody that will shout. I said restoration just hit somebody that will open your mouth and shout. Y'all missed it. I said restoration is about to restore somebody that will open your mouth and shout. That will clap your hands and shout. But stand on your feet and shout. Glory to God. Open your mouth and shout. Shout. Throw your hands 
come say, hit me, hit me, hit me. I'm telling you, restoration is ready to hit your life. Open your mouth and hit me, hit me. I dare you to hit yourself. I dare you to hit yourself. Hit yourself. Say, hit me, hit me. Restoration is getting ready to restore your life. Somebody scream in this house. I said, open your mouth, shout. Y'all tired? Y'all tired? Y'all tired? It took seven times for that wall to come down. The wall came down and the people went up. The walls came down and the people went up because they shouted. I said, the walls came. The walls fell flat and the people went up. Open your mouth and shout one more time. Shout. Please be seated, be seated. I'm almost done. Oh my, I felt the anointing right there. I am a recipient. I say, I am a recipient. When restoration hits your life, it'll change your whole life. I say, I am a recipient. When restoration hits your life, it'll change your whole life from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet bless going in bless going out open your mouth and shout again shout 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 grab your neighbors and me too me too me too i'm a recipient me too i'm a recipient me too me i'm a recipient me too Watch this. And when I finish, 
Watch this. We are going to resume where we were. Y'all missed it. I said, when I finish, we're going to resume where we were. Jesus. The Bible says that when courage, faith, brother change, and sister hope, I said the Bible says when, when brother courage, sister faith, brother change, and sister hope, while stuck between a rock and a hard place, they entered the city during a famine. I, oh yeah, let me prophesy right here. It, it ain't what it looks like. It's not what it looks like. I'm, I'm, I'm going to prophesy right here. The presidential race ain't what it looks like. Glory to God. <laughs> Jesus. Glory to God. It ain't what it looks like. They said to themselves, if we go into the city, we die there. And if we sit here, we die here. If I go into the city, we die. If we sit here, we still going to die. Jesus. Watch this. If we fall into the hands of the Syrians, if they let us live, we live. And if they kill us, we die. That's, that's, that's between a rock and a hard place. Okay. All right, Pastor. What are you saying? If I pay my electric bill, I ain't going to have no food to eat. <laughs> if I don't pay my electric bill, I ain't going to have no lights and no electric. If I pay my car note, I ain't going to have no gas in my car. And no gas in my car, I ain't going to be able to drive my car. Can't go to work. If we go into the city, we die. If we sit here, we die. Between a rock and a hard place. The Bible said, but when it got dark, they rose up. Ooh, I want to I prophesy right there. When it got dark, the twilight, when it got dark, they rose up. Some of y'all in situations right now, and it's dark. I can't have prophesied at least two or three persons. It's time for you to rise up. In the midst of your dark situation, in the midst of darkness, it's time for you to get up. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, get up. Get on up. Jesus. I know it's dark, but you got to get up. I know it's uncomfortable, but you got to get up. I know everybody's talking about you. Don't say ugly things about you, but you got to get up. I know that you have not figured it out, but you got you still got to get up. I know you don't know where your next paycheck is coming from, but you got to get up. Waiting on your next paycheck. Glory to God. But you got to get up. Look at your name, say get up. I say oh, open your mouth and say, get up. Get on up. The Bible says it was when it got dark, they rose up, went into the uttermost part of the camp of Syria. Watch this and don't miss this. When they got there, it was no man there. Hmm? Wait a minute. This is a camp with men in it, soldiers, warriors. But when they got there, it was no man there. Hold up. They've been outside the city hearing men talking. 
hearing men making merry, hearing the horses and the chariots inside the camp. But when they got in, it was no men there. Jesus. God told me to tell somebody what you think is standing in your way, it ain't there. Y'all missed that. God told me to tell somebody what you think is standing in your way, it ain't there. It's all your imagination because it ain't there. It's all in the back of your mind but it ain't there. I need you to open your mouth and look at your neighbors and neighbor. The devil is lying to you because it ain't there. Come on, look at somebody and say, it ain't there. The figment of your imagination, it ain't there. The Bible said when they made up in their mind and they went into the city, it was no one there. The lepers thought they were stuck in a hard place, but the Lord made, watch this, the Lord made. See, you were you worrying about your enemies? God is going to make them. The Bible said the Lord made Jesus. The Lord made them, are you hearing me? made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise mm -hmm, of chariots and horses. In other words, their enemies was hearing something that wasn't even there. I can't have prophesy. See, you worried about your enemy, but God gonna make them hear something that ain't really there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here's something that ain't really there. The Bible says, when they thought what they heard, they left their tents, they left their horses, they left their donkeys, and they left their and they left the camp. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? And the Bible said they fled for their lives. <laughs> Only because God made them to hear. Jesus, because God made their enemies to hear. And this is for about 20 people who's coming out of a stuck position in your head. Y'all better hear me. I said this is for about 20 persons in this house and watching on live stream. Glory to God, who's coming out of a stuck position in your head. That your, that your enemy is about to hear noises of chariots and horses. If you will shout again one more time, I came to prophesy that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. I knew you've been stuck too long, not having enough, but God just made your enemies your footstool. I need somebody to open your mouth and said no more stuck positions for me. I'm not going to be stuck no more in that position. Not another day in my life. Your enemies is about to become your footstool. Look at your neighbor against a neighbor. No more stuck positions in your life. The pastor, come on, y'all talk back to me. Say, Pastor, why no more stuck positions? Come on, talk back to me. Say, Pastor, why no more stuck positions? Let me tell you why. Because you and God can pull you out. Y'all missed that. Why is there no more stuck positions in your life? Because you and God can pull you out to never be stuck again. You and God. Yeah, T, I'm ready to close right here. You and God can pull you out. 
that you would never be jammed up again. You and God can pull you out that you'll never be wedged again. You and God can pull you out that you'll never be caught in again. You and God can pull you out that you'll never be glued in again. You and God can pull you out where you'll never push in or be pushed in again. You and God can pull you out that you will never be forced in again. If you shout again, God is going to pull you out to bring you out. Somebody open your mouth and shout, God, pull me out. As I open your mouth, say, God, pull me out. Lift your hands, lift your hands. You'll never be stuck again. You'll never be jammed in again. You'll never be wedged in again. You'll never be caught in again. You'll never be pushed in again. You'll never be forced in again. Open your mouth, say, God, pull me out. Reach over and grab your neighbor and pull him. Find somebody and pull him. And say, neighbor, this is what God is doing to you and me. When I pull you and you pull me, that's God pulling us out. And we'll never be stuck another day in our life. Now somebody shout right there. Somebody told me he'll lift your burden. Somebody told me he'll bring you out. Somebody told me he'll lift your burden. Somebody told me he'll break every chain. Somebody told me he'll break every fetter. Somebody told me he'll destroy every yoke. Somebody told me he'll bring you out. Over your mouth, say, God, bring me out. 